What's up, comic book community? Izzy here, and I'm so excited to have this very special edition of the Izzyverse. We're going to talk with Sean over at Overstreet Access. Now, Overstreet has been around longer than pretty much any other type of pricing guide structure. We're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to talk a little bit about the app and where you could get it and how you could utilize it and everything of that nature. So let's take this opportunity right now to welcome into the show, Sean. What's up, Sean? How you doing? How's it going, everybody? Okay, good. So, Sean, we met last week over at Baltimore Comic Con. I know we were just chatting at first and stuff like that, and then we really got into the app. And really excited to hear more about this app. But first, tell me, tell the group here what Sean's all about and who is Sean. <laughs> so, um, my name is Sean Sipple. I'm actually the, uh, the director of digital strategy for Jeffy Family Enterprises, but my main focus right now is, is kind of uh, is the, the overstreet of overstreet. Um, so historically, I've been a comic collector for a couple of decades now and uh, uh, an application developer. Um, a couple of years ago, I was uh, getting a little frustrated with the collection management and valuation options out there on the internet and was ending up having to do double entry with all of my stuff because I was using two products. Um, so I, uh, I got a hold of the guys at, at Diamond and Gemstone and, and pitched this idea to them and basically said, hey guys, you gotta, they just gotta let me build you something real cool. Um, so that's pretty much been the, the, my career path and then kind of my hobby path too for the last four years. So it's been a nice, convergence of the thing that I love to do the most and then my career at the same time. So um, they've really given me the opportunity to kind of come in here and uh, um, build them something really special. Um, we started out with the premise being that we wanted to, above all, bring the Overstreet Price Guide online and be able to have a fully digital and accessible database of all the valuations that we had, but we wanted to extend it past that. So. Uh, we really wanted this to be a platform that um, collectors and retailers, you know, and just people who are curious about comics can use to, to learn more about the industry and facilitate their hobby and, and you know, kind of uh, help the back issue market as well at the same time. So, so you mentioned something that was interesting to me, um, but really Overstreet Price Guy has been around for a long time. We're at the, as we talked about, the 53rd edition. 53rd year, yeah. Right, fifty third year. So it's been around for extremely. It's it's really the first of its kind, right? And then we ended up going through different iterations of price guides. We mentioned Wizard last week. We talked a little about about Wizard, but then today we have a lot of different organizations. Go Collect that comes to my head. Um, what else? Go Collect, Key Collector, Key of collector, course, Commerce and price Cover price. price, which those yeah. are the top three, I would say. Yeah. Cover but price. Overstreet is on a level of its own, right? Being that it was the first. And more importantly, now they're getting involved in the app game. Why Why it took so long, do you think, for Overstreet to get there? Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's a, there's a bunch of different reasons why they never did that before. But uh, I, I, I think that they never really had somebody to, to, to come in and really champion the product and, and, and somebody who was really dialed into kind of like the online collectors community and, and stuff like that. You know, I, you know, it was just the right time to start doing it now. You know, I know that a lot of people wish they would have done it a long time ago, and including Diamond. Um, but that's that's where we're at now. So, mm -hmm. but it, it, it's always good, right? It's like Disney, for example. Disney always waits till everybody does things first <laughs> before, or Apple, for that matter, yeah. and then they say, "Okay, now it's our turn to do it, and let's do it better than everybody else." Well, one of the one of the other things, you know, is that Overstreet's got a very kind of rational philosophy. Of, and, and approach to any of its stuff, whether it's pricing models or, you know, how we're going to approach, uh, you know, digitizing the guide or anything like that. And they really wanted to make sure that we put a lot of, you know, kind of thought and energy into making sure that we were building something that was going to be usable and feasible and, and you know, functional for the widest variety of, of collectors and retailers out there. You know, so it's been a real thoughtful approach. Even even once they agreed to to start working on this, it wasn't, you know, let's let's dive in and get something up here in six months or anything like that. It's been a couple of years in the process, and you know, they've been they've been making a lot of thoughtful decisions about you know how we're going to build stuff, when we're going to build it, and you know how we're going to roll things out too. So, 
Awesome. So let's take this opportunity to take a look at the app. So I'm going to go ahead and put it up. Okay. So sure. let's get things started. Give me a rundown of the page in itself. So this is the website. As you can see, we put it, we put the website in the bottom of the screen here for you guys to, to take advantage of it and take a look at it. But talk to me a little bit about how Overstreet Access works. So basically, you know, we've got uh, kind of three main components to the to the whole platform. And again, we have we have you know the desktop version that's that's cloud based, so you access through your browser. We also have a mobile responsive version, so if you're on your phone, you can just you know browse the site and you get all the functionality through Safari. Um, and then we also have a mobile app for our our silver and gold level um, uh, collection management subscribers as well. Um, you know, we built the, the app to be as accessible and flexible as we could. Um, there are, are a couple of different, like I said, there, there are three basic kind of uh, uh, areas of the, of the platform. So we have uh, fully sussed out and cross-referenced encyclopedia of comics. Um, you can come on and you don't even need to be a subscriber to do that. You can come on and take a look at old Spider-Man issues and, or see, you know, first appearances of characters or look at all the covers that a, a specific artist has done or whatever books that they worked on, as well as looking up, you know, local comic shops and seeing what they have for, for sale from the back issue standpoint. Um, then we also have obviously the overstreet values associated with those issues. Um, and that's kind of our lowest tier of subscription is to be able to, you know, browse the database and get, you know, live overstreet access values for uh, those raw books. And then we also took it another step further and built an entire collection management system so that not only can you interact with all the comp knowledge, see the valuations, but now you can manage your collection uh, very easily when using the system. Awesome, awesome. So let's take a look at this dashboard that we got here. Um, yep, that's not my collection. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish it was mine. I wish it was all of ours. Yeah. So when when a subscriber first logs in, they get brought to their dashboard. We've got a little bit of information that kind of gives an overview of everything they've got. Uh, we've got some utility navigation over on the left to access your collections, uh, view all your issues at once, view your want list. Um, your chosen retailers, and then, of course, uh, uh, Excel import and export for collections. Uh, we've got some, some account settings that are easily accessible. And then <clears throat> we have an area that's, that we're in development on, <coughs> excuse me, that will allow users to kind of interact with their collection on a, on a higher level. So we've got a spot for future announcements. So uh, moving forward, when we start doing deployment pushes, which we do about every you know one or two weeks, we can let all the users know what the new functions are and, and kind of give them an overview of what's, what's coming as well. Um, <clears throat> we can look at the top valued boxes. I know this one looks a little goofy, but that's just the, the cover image for some reason is, is stacked with that. Um, but you can see your most valuable boxes. Uh, you get a little bit of metadata about each one of those, number of publishers, titles, issues, as well as a running total for that box. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also come in and evaluate your most valuable issues. I see I've got a couple of these in there. Yeah. Certainly and those not. are not the facsimiles, right? That just no, 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 not with a <laughs> $1, $1 million price tag on there. Yeah. Um, so not you can see your top, yeah, <laughs> you can see your top, your your uh, your top issues, top key issues certified books in raw, along with quick access to the actual issue data itself, as well as where it is inside of your collection. So we can come in and actually do a quick access in if we're looking to find a box in our collection. And of course, you're able to assign a grade to it and uh, you see running and current total values. So as far as the grade goes, that that's the grade according to CGC, I take it. Well, so primarily Overstreet is uh, the pricing and valuation is based upon raw value over time. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the ability for subscribers to be able to, uh, you know, uh, assign books to be, you know, certified or or signed. And we're working on a, a separate pricing mechanism to deal with, you know, the, the, the value difference between a raw 
nine six and a you know slab to nine six of, of you know a book that's in your collection. Um, again, we're we're that's something that is a little bit above and beyond the you know historical scope of Overstreet. So we're really trying to take a thoughtful approach to that. So right now we allow users to come in and assign books as certified and signed. They're still being assigned raw value, but as soon as we put the new uh, certified pricing in place, everybody's collections will be updated and those books will automatically update to the new values. That's, that's good to know. All right, so tell me a little bit about how this, this setup works with collections, boxes, titles, issues. So I know there's a, there's a lot of different ways to, to kind of visualize and, and you know create interfaces for you know data models like collections. Um, the way that we decided to approach this from an initial standpoint is to kind of organize our data in the same way that the most collectors are going to manage their own collections. So we have we have grouped collections and we have boxes and inside of boxes we have things organized by publisher and title. Um, so by collections, um, like our gold users have access to five different collections. So if you wanted to separate all of your keys into one area and keep that organized, uh, you can do that. If your kids have their own little, you know, collections, you can set one up that's just going to deal with their books and keep everything separate, separated from evaluation standpoint from yours. So you give you a little bit of flexibility as far as how you set up that, that kind of top level organization. And then it comes down into kind of a, the most rational mindset that we could think of for that was having collections and then boxes and then inside of boxes, again, like I said, publishers and titles. And then you can thumb through your title and see all of your individual books. That's great. That's great. Now, I see a button there that says gap list. Talk to me about that button. So the gap list is a feature that we put in here that was designed to make uh, digging through long boxes at your local LCS a lot easier. Um, so if you're going through all of the Batman, you know, box there and you're pulling out issues, instead of having to go through and scroll down and see if you have, you know, a certain issue already in your collection, you can hit the gap list. And this will only show you the issues that you don't have inside of that collection. Uh, you know, so one of the things that I, you know, always succumb to is, especially when I'm filling, you know, gaps in 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 kind of longer running titles like Uncanny X Men, you know, or ASM or something like that, is that I'm buying dupes of books that I don't necessarily want to buy dupes. Um, so I know that this makes it a little bit easier because if it's on that gap list. You know, it's you know, it's not something that you that you already have. And once you add something from the gap list, it immediately comes off of there. So, you know, uh, even if you haven't gone through and, and done all of your organization for, you know, what your recent purchases are, as long as you're marking it there you know, from your phone, it'll make sure that, that it's taken off of that availability list. One of the things I was doing this this couple of weeks, actually, is I've been reorganizing my collection. And now that you mentioned gap list, I'm, I came across a Thor book that I have. I can't remember the number of it for the life of me. I'm sorry to say that, but it was the first appearance of the New Warriors. Mm -hmm. And what I found out is I had four copies of the book. <laughs> and in my brain, I'm like, why do I have four copies of the book? But I know that feeling of going to uh, either a convention or an LCS or anything of that nature. I know the feeling of, going and hunting for books and then when you pick out a book there's something there's something about the book you don't know exactly what it is but there's something about the book it's like oh that cover's hot or that's and then your brain starts telling you 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 gotta buy this book so you go ahead and you buy the book only to find out that you own the book and that's probably the reason yeah. why you're going through that oh yeah this is why this book is familiar to me yeah. because i own it already well when you know again you know before before we before Overstreet Access and, you know, earlier on in kind of my collecting career, I was, uh, I, that would happen to me all the time, you know, because I'd go out and I'd, I'd do a bunch of bargain bin purchases or I'd hit a flea market or, you know, a garage sale and I'd, you know, I'd come home and I just wouldn't, wouldn't take the time to enter everything into both of my collection management systems at the same time. Um, so again, like maybe I entered it into one, but not the other one. And, you know, like I said, I just ended up with so many dupes. So, 
you know, a lot of the thought that gets put into the feature sets that go into Overstreet Access are based upon kind of my own collection habits and, and the collection habits and, and kind of challenges the, of our users too. Um, you know, we're very responsive to, to user feedback. There was a, uh, a uh, one of our subscribers a couple of weeks ago, I think it was three or four weeks ago, had sent some feedback saying that he really wanted to be able to rearrange his collections in his boxes, uh, as well as the the order that those were showing up in the the different various drop downs around the site. So we thought that was a great idea and, and kind of fast tracked that and ended up launching it last week right before Baltimore. So now you can come in and, and actually um, sort all of your boxes. It's just a quick and quick and easy drag and drop interface. So, you know, let's say you had a box for your keys or something, you can, drum, you can bring that to the beginning and you wouldn't be necessarily, you know, reliant on just a straight alphanumerical ordering uh, methodology. I specifically like that you made it look like a comic book box. Yeah. The design element. Yep. So that was pretty, that's pretty cool that it just has that, you know, the lid and the little space to put your hand. I, I thought that was cool. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and, you know, Right now, you know, it, it, it's kind of the, the first issue that goes in a box is the one that gets displayed there. But I think in the next two weeks, we should be pushing out something that will allow users to actually customize which comic goes in the front of which box. Uh, so you'd be able to do some further customizations about the, you know, kind of the way that everything is visualized. Um, and eventually we'll, we'll probably put in some uh, some functionality that allow users to be able to, uh, um, you know, make their, pub make their uh, collection public and, you know, be able to have that, you know, that kind of external interface for people to come in and kind of check out what they've got. Yeah, for multiple reasons, I think that's really good because that's another way of kind of like if you want to resell and you could say, hey, this is there. Let's take a look if this person has this book. Oh, if this person has this book. Maybe we could we could work an arrangement without having to go through like eBay or something like that or whatnot mm -hmm. or anything like that. We could just do a transactions outside of the scope of what sellers are doing to get the middleman out of the way in other yeah. words well one of the biggest one of the biggest things that we want to do with this site is be able to facilitate communication between collectors specifically and especially in, in kind of like the back issue market with retailers you know i, I can't tell you how many retailers i've talked about that that have just have these huge collections of back issue stock that that are hard for them to monetize and, and get rid of. So, you know, a retailer may come to your house and take a look at your collection and, and you know, buy your collection. And typically what happens after that is they have somebody go through all the boxes and they pull out all the keys or all the, you know, kind of like $50 and up books. And those are, are the ones that get space behind the counter that, you know, get put into, you know, the, the higher value boxes that are that actually, you know, go into the retail shops. But they're often left with so many other books, you know, the two dollar ones, three dollars, ten dollars, that they can't really rationalize using square footage in their in their retail outlet for. So a lot of those collections get stuck into you know storage units and are kind of like picked at every once in a while, but generally forgotten unless there's a local convention where you know, how to yeah. get some of that stuff. But from a collector standpoint, you know, I need a two dollar Punisher issue just as much as I need, you know a $50 ASM or, you know, a hundred dollar uncanny X-Men. Um, and sometimes those, those little issues can be harder to find than the keys because everybody's looking for the keys and putting the keys out there um, and being a completionist and, and, and kind of having that natural collectors OCD, you know, we thought it would be a great way to a help retailers get rid of, you know, potentially get rid of stock that, that wasn't going to see the light of day necessarily mm -hmm. and allow collectors to source, you know, some of the, the just as important, but not nearly as valuable issues, you know, in order to fill runs and, and, and kind of, you know, appease their collection needs. Yeah. I know um, exactly what that means. You know, yeah. you, you mentioned Punisher. I didn't realize I have a box and a half of Punisher <laughs> comics that I collected <laughs> From the Garth Ennis run when he did yep. Max and all those, and I'm like, I had a lot of Punisher. And yep. I didn't realize exactly. that. You know, we all <laughs> we all could say we have a lot of Spider Man, we got a lot of X Men, we got a lot of Batman. Punisher is not one of those guys. I'm sorry to say, but but yeah, it, it is it is helpful, especially if you just want to get rid of stuff that you know doesn't will, will never be a super key. So it won't be an MCU thing. It won't be a DC thing as as far as we know. 
um, you know, the first appearance of Grandma Jones or something like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, who really wants that other than the person that's trying to fill that run? Well, uh, there are those. just like as a personal example, one of the first one of the first series that I started collecting as an adult back in college was Hellblazer. Absolutely love Hellblazer. And, you know, this is, you know, 25 years ago, 30 years ago. And uh, I'm still, still trying to track down like the last three issues towards the end of the run, you know, up in, up in the, the high 200s where I'm just like, I just can't find them anywhere. And they're not expensive books. They're cover price books, you know, but I need them because I will never finish this run. I'll never exactly. feel like it's complete until I find them. So, you know. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully Overstreet Access will, will, you know, give retailers and collectors, you know, both the tools to kind of help help with both of those, both That's ends awesome. of that. That's great, and, man. And we've got pretty good buy-in from, from, yeah. <laughs> I got a lot of big sales, too. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've got, you know, pretty good response from the retailer community. Uh, we're seeing more and more sign up. Um, we're, we're giving retailers their accounts for free, so it gives them some some added uh, incentive to use the tool and, and post these books up there. Um, we've got some, some online retailers that have, you know, posted up 10, 20, 30,000 books. We've got um, some local comic shop. Well, not local to me, but, you know, comic shops across the country that have taken the time to put in, you know, 5,000, 10,000, you know, issues in there. So um, as, as users are browsing, every time they look at it, like we can go check one out here. So if we just go, uh, so let's say we're looking for Cerebus. Uh, we browse into the title, read a little bit about the title here, and then we see all the issues inside of that run. If we go and click on one of the issues, go to the issue detail page, we get all sorts of cool encyclopedic information. We've got our valuation stuff. If it's in a, if it's in a collection, you know, we can we can see where it is in our in you know what box it's in, but we also have a where to buy on every issue detail page. So mm -hmm. if any of the retailers out there have this specific issue, you know, as part of their Overstreet Access stock, you'll be able to dial in, see what grade they've got, you know, what price that they're looking for, et cetera, and then we provide contact information for the collectors to reach out and talk to the uh, talk to that specific retailer and, and negotiate a potential sale for that 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 is awesome it's it's like you're doing all the labor for them yeah and and you know it's they they get the sale in really in, in good timing it's I, I think that's fantastic the more people get involved in utilizing the app i guess it's going to become an easier way of just trying to find a, a, a specific book and more importantly move that book Yep. And it's, it's, it's also important to note that the Overstreet Access is never going to be a transactional site, at least not from a standpoint of, you know, uh, facilitating, you know, uh, e-commerce for purchase of issues. You know, we may sell some of the other gemstone, you know, books, the, the guide to collecting or whatever. We may throw some t-shirts up there and, and have, you know, some swag for sale, but from a transactional standpoint with the comics, we don't ever want to be in a position where somebody could say, oh, you know, Overstreet is making a percentage on all of these sales that must be influencing the price. You know, we want to stay as agnostic as possible as far as that goes. But at the same time, we want to facilitate, you know, potential transactions directly from collectors to uh, the retailers. So by putting them in touch, you know, we can help facilitate you know, the sale without necessarily being a part of it. So we want everybody to have that, that option and, and provide them as many, with as many options for, you know, getting the books they need as they can. Yeah. And, and especially now where we have, it's hard to find an LCS. It really is. You know, I'm in New York and, you know, I find them everywhere because it's New York city. But if you go to, let's just say Colorado, they might not be as many out there. Yeah. So to find someone that says, Hey, and someone local, for that matter, say, hey, I could go here and see if they have this book. Oh, it looks like they do. Let me go ahead and give them a call and see if they can hold it out for me and I'll go pick it up or something like that. Or we well, can make an online transit. Even, even in New York, where where you've got you know a higher density of, of comic shops per collector out there, um, you know, this this should be a time saver. If if you can get your your local LCSs to put, you know, start putting books up here 
then when you're you know you've got time on a saturday afternoon to do some you know do some geeking out and collecting you can go on and kind of plan what you're going to be doing and where you're going to go for what so you don't have to go and all over to five different lcs's looking for the same asm uh mm -hmm. issue you can come on here see which one of them has it go to that you know then you know what you're buying where um and it just kind of helps it helps you know increase the efficiency of, of kind of how you're collecting as well too awesome all right so we talked a little bit about where we could find these books let's talk about adding a book to the collection so sure. i want to go ahead and add a book and you know what i'm just going to look at the book i have right there marvel premiere number one that's the marvel first premiere. appearance of adam warlock as warlock <laughs> so marvel oh. premiere number one so we go ahead, we do that. Up, oh, bam, there it is. So that's that's the book. That's the I guess that's the first issue because it says 61 issues. Yep. Right. Go ahead and walk me through. So this. basically, you know, you can come in, you can use the 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 top search bar for quick title and issue. And basically what that does is that parses it out. And so we've searched for Marvel Premiere issue number one. This brings us all the titles that are close to that, uh, close to that name that have an issue number one. Once we're here, we can either add, if we have a bunch of issues from this specific title, we can click on the, the little yellow plus here and, and add things in bulk. So I could come in here. If I had an entire run of this, I could select them all, provide a base grade, and then come in and kind of cherry pick the data on individual issues. Let's say I don't have number two or three. Or four. We can also turn variants on and off. Some people like collecting those, some some do not. Um, so if I come in here and let's say I have all but two, three, and four, and I'll put everything at a 9.0, except for our number one, which is a 9.6. Um, the three dots over here allow us to, to, to interact with a couple other data fields. So if this is signed, you can see it's signed by me. Um, if it's certified, I can choose who it's certified from or by, put in the certification number, apply. So now I've got an entire series except for two, three, and four with a certified sign number one. Um, I select the collection that I'm going to put it in. So let's just put this in, put this in brandy new. And then new box. So once we've done that, then basically what I've done is I've added a whole bunch of issues into my collection in a very short amount of time. So I've entered in 58 out of 61 of the uh, issues in that run. You notice on the gap list, we'll have all the ones that we deselected. Mm -hmm. And we've got everything added in there. That's great. And you did that in just a matter of seconds. Now, of course, you know what you're doing, but it, it's still, once you get used to that process, you could pretty much put your books in pretty on a quick, quickly, you know, really yeah. quick. So. so if we wanted to, I'm going to take a look at Batman here. So if we want to come in, I'm going to turn off variants just to kind of clean up the noise a little bit here. Now you see everywhere I see Batman number one from, from Rebirth here. You'll notice that there's a key issue icon here. There's a blue heart that tells me that this is already existing on my want list. And this shows that it's in at least one of my collections. Mm, okay. Now, if I click into the into the issue, again, now I've got I've got information about that issue, first appearances, you know, variant count, uh, some description text, the guide notes. Um, all of our valuations, and then on in collections, I can see that I have three copies of this, the different grades, the current guide price of each one of those individual books, and then which collection and which box that's in. So if I want to go in and actually take a look at this one, I can go straight into unsorted issues, and then I can find it in here. Um, and that's that's something, especially with this day and age, where companies had the tendency to kind of leak they relaunched their books you know we had daredevil number one last year and then we have daredevil number one this year just come mm -hmm. out this week so yeah. it helps out that you actually have the image and not only just the image the story that it's attached to 
So mm-hmm. the, the name of the story, that's, I think that's really, really good thing. Well, we've got to, again, you know, in the beginning when I was describing kind of the encyclopedic nature of the database, we've got a lot of other features in here as well. So when you browse down in the issue detail page, you can, again, you can see all the, the various variants for that book. You can see variants. Wow. You can see characters that, that showed up in that book, contributors that worked on it. Um, if it's part of a story arc, you'll see the other books that are in the story arc, and you can easily navigate to those too. So if the, let's say you're adding a variant in here, you can click to the variant, it's got its own page. So you can add this on its own as well. And it's actually a separate issue in your collection. So it's not like a subset. So if I wanna add a single issue from the issue detail page, I can click on yellow plus. Now I've got a slightly different interface, but this is more tailored to, to adding a single issue. So I can come in, I can go into, let's just add this new test collection. Unsorted issues. Let's give it a nine zero. I can pick my purchase date. Sign up today, and I paid fifty bucks for it because I'm crazy. Um, again, now we've got our certified, and I can put in notes. I can save that to my collection, and then when I go back to my collection. See, uh, new tests unsorted. Under Batman, there's my number two. There it is, right there. Yep. I think that was the right box. I may not have gotten the right box for that, but in any case, one of the other things that you can do is you can search by story arc. Mm-hmm. So if you want to come in and look at Nightfall, look into that that story arc again. Get a lot of uh, descriptive information about that story arc. Mm-hmm. We get basically what what amounts to a chronological listing of all of the books that are in that story arc, even across titles. So we've got the first couple issues are in Batman. That's that's really helpful. Yep. And then I think there's five different ones here. There's showcase. I think, I think there's a Catwoman somewhere in here too. But actually, two different showcases. It looks like I think the ninety-five. Shadow there. of the Bat as well. Yep, yep. So again, you can come and and view individual values for books. You can come up here if you wanted to to kind of uh, go through multiple values for this story arc, and this applies to titles as well. You can click on the list icon up here, and now. It's just like going through the guide. So I can look up what a five five here is and number six. So it, it just gives you a, a couple of different ways to, to track evaluations and, and research what books you're gonna add. Uh, the other thing that we can do from here oops, is we can add the entire story arc, just like we can add multiple issues from a specific title, we can add multiple issues from a specific story arc. So that way, especially with title with story arcs like Nightfall that cross over so many different titles, I don't have to go to each one of those titles, pick those specific books, then add them in. I can add an entire run of a story arc. Yeah, and that's really helpful because sometimes we put our collection, when we put our collections together, sometimes we put them by the name by the title. We don't necessarily put it by the arc, right? So for example, you got the Infinity Gauntlet storyline. Well, mm-hmm. Affinity Gauntlet, the original is six issues, but yet you have Thanos Quest, you have the Silver Surfer issues, and then you have all these other, you know, tie-in issues that yep. came in. And it's it's nice to see you're kind of like making your own version of an omnibus collection um, in that way. Yep. Where it's like, oh, now I know which books I need to get to complete my entire Infinity Gauntlet run. So I think that's really impressive. That's something n- many people don't even think about it, but a lot of people want to do. Well, and, and, and there are things that we're working on to even take that and extend that a little bit farther. Uh, some of the some of the uh, features and functionality that we have coming up in the next you know three to six months, you know, are really going to be focused on how to view your collection. Um, you know, so we may have some some alternate collection views coming up to where you could you know get a list of all the story arcs that you've got and see you know be able to get your gaps for all the story arcs as well as for you know your straight titles as well um you know so we've got we've got a lot of plans that that i think you know our, our subscribers are going to love and it's going to provide a lot of flexibility for collectors to come in and kind of 
interact with their collections in a much more flexible way. So that's kind of our goal. And, you know, they're, they're pretty dedicated to, you know, keeping this as an organic and, and growing platform. You know, I don't think that we're ever gonna get to a point where we just say, okay, we're done developing, here you go. Um, you know, it, it's gonna be changing and evolving, you know, constantly. Yeah. Now, as far as, the, as far as comic books go, we, we all know Wednesday is always a thing. Yep. How soon does the books get inputted into the system the minute, you know, once they come out? So, of course, you got New Comic Book Wednesday. It's a weekly, it's a weekly event for us. Mm -hmm. How would a, a new book? So we try, we try and stay up on that. You know, it, it can be a little daunting, especially with all of the variants out there. So what we try and do is we try and make sure that we at least have A covers for everything that's, that's coming out and, and that's new. Um, but again, like there, there are, you know, any titles out there that uh, sometimes we need a little help with or in a little bit of time to source um, variants. You know, we try and stay, you know, kind of reasonably up on those. Um, but again, with the variant game is, is so crazy. There's more variants than a, a covers coming out pretty much on a weekly basis now. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of those that, that don't go through diamond or aren't necessarily out there in, in kind of, you know, for general consumption, you get guy you get shops that are doing shop covers. And, you know, for a lot of those, those are limited to kind of geographic area until somebody finds out about them and throws them up on eBay or something. But, um, you know, so we try and really, you know, have an interactive relationship with our retailers and with collectors too. So we have this the little feedback button that's on all the pages over here. Um, allows both retailers and collectors to come in and let us know if, if something's not working or if there's some incorrect data or we're missing something. Um, and we get a lot of feedback from, from our uh, uh, subscribers and they kind of help let us know Hey, we need to get this variant up there. You're missing, you know, this Midtown Comics version of this, you know, XYZ Spider-Man cover or something like that, so that we can go out there, source it, get it added in the database, get it, get the valuation uh, information in there, and allow you know collectors to put those in uh, into their collections too. So, you know, we see this as as kind of a, a community platform too, and we encourage our users to be very interactive with this whether it's asking for new features or or pointing out something that we you know may have not gotten right to yeah this is amazing i you know like i said i've toyed around with it a little bit um and i've been having a blast just putting books in already i didn't i, go, yep. I didn't go crazy but i did manage to to enter in some of my books that i have some that are my see I, I got two boxes i did two boxes right yeah. I did my regular RAWs and I did my CGCs, right? Because that's easy for me right now. Because yeah. I have a very small CGC collection, um, which I'm working on building. But I'm also working on being able to get books to shops. And more importantly, when I go to conventions, getting the signatures with the graded. Because I do have a lot of signed books. Yeah. What I don't have is a lot of CGC books that were signed because I got my comic books before CGC was even a thing. Yep. So that's something that's interesting to see that you could do that with the collections. I, I like that a lot. Tell me a little bit more about the pricing structures as far as the account levels. So the different, so you got your standards, you got your bronze, you got your goals. Tell me, tell me why so, some people want to go for the gold. So right now we've got three basic tiers for subscribers. We've got uh, the bronze tier, which is basically just users that want to have access to the overstreet prices. Um, so it's $3 uh, a month or $30 a year, essentially the same price as buying the guide. And actually, I think if you buy the, the print guide for 53 on page 64, there's a coupon there for a free annual bronze account. So it's a $30 value. Now, you can also apply that coupon to an annual silver or gold too. So you could actually get 30 bucks off an annual account for the collection management side of things too. So the, the silver and gold, um, tiers, the silver tier is, is for your kind of your newer collectors. I think that we put a cap of 5,000 issues under management um, for that and one collection. Uh, this is for the, the collectors that may only have a, you know, a long box or two or just getting into things. It'll allow them to, you know, utilize the platforms, get the pricing and have some, some limited collection management functionality to get them started through there. And that's uh, five bucks a month and 50 a year. 
And then for the bigger collectors, over 5,000 issues, we have the gold uh, account. So that's five different collections. You get unlimited boxes and unlimited issues. Uh, we have some of our subscribers who have you know, 50,000, 80,000 issues in there. Uh, I think is the biggest one that I've seen. Yeah, I, I wish. One of those. Yeah, I've, I've got 8,000, and that's a lot of comics. I can't imagine having 10 times that. That's crazy. Try fitting them uh, all in a two-bedroom apartment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have an entire room in my house that's just mine. Um, but anyway, so that, that top tier is 9 bucks a month or 90 a year. Um, I don't see those prices going up at all. We may we may uh, uh, introduce some different levels with some other different functionality at some point in time, but I think that was kind of the the, the base level of subscription structure that that we determined would be necessary to, to get the site going. That's great. That's absolutely amazing. So I guess it's a good time to wrap things up. But um, Sean, for someone who's never heard of Overstreet Access, how would you give the one minute pitch to them? One minute pitch. Um, I mean, Overstreet Access is, you know, we're trying to build a community here. We're trying to build a platform that that really just helps support the industry as a whole. You know, um, we want it to be flexible. We want it to be functional. And we want it to be a tool that, that retailers and new collectors and, and the old school guys can use and uh, and, and we want it to be a resource to, for people to learn about comics, too. Yeah. Perfect. Great. Well, it's been a blast. Let's go ahead and remove this screen for a second. Thank you, Sean. Thank you for everything. They could get Overstreet Access by going to overstreetaccess.com. What about the social media? We, um, it it should be the same. I don't, I don't have a lot to do with our social media. I think that we're on Instagram and, and Facebook right now. Uh, again, so just searching for Overstreet Access on either of those platforms, I'll bring you to where are you looking to be. <laughs> and thank you so much, Sean, for this time. I really appreciate it. It was it was phenomenal. It was great. Guys, go check it out. We'll see you on the next one. We'll talk more comics. We'll talk more about Overstreet Access, and we'll see what next show we're at. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Excelsior. And let's hit that end record button. <laughs>